there? Oh, that's fun. Okay. Alright. Hey, you can leave now. Um, I know you guys really want to, so you can, you can go and have fun in the little kids' room, because it's way more fun. We all know. We all want to be there. So you are dismissed. Congratulations. I'm waiting for them to go. So, Father's Day. Today is Father's Day. Who's excited for that? Any of the fathers? Good. What are we all doing today? What, so you guys got plans? Is anybody going to make food? Or any fathers going to actually be growing? Or is it going to be somebody doing that for them? Subway. Let's go to Nancy. Where are you going to go to Nancy? Couple of you? Got a subway? Where are you guys going? Death Rose. Nice. Lock her up, okay. So, you guys are still home? Crack that. Okay. So, you don't even know what you're doing. You're just like, I don't know. We're just going to wing it. It's just Father's Day. <laughs> Not important. Oh, by the way, we're just going to um, kind of share our um, experiences with fathers. We both have two different, very different um, views on uh, fathers. Cause yeah. Well, you'll do this to the family. You're going to talk about that. And then after that, I'm going to give you what the Bible says about God, our Father, because that's important, because he's awesome. Um, but first, I'm just going to talk about my dad. And most of you know my dad, at least you should, because you are coming to this church, and he is, you know, the pastor. And he's pretty awesome. I have notes, because I don't know how to talk about him. This is scary. Um, but he's a pretty good dad. I, I was a little worried to come up here because I was like, man, my dad is so great. I don't want to talk about a great dad. I wish I had a bad dad, but I'm like, wow, I really like him more. But he's actually like, pretty great. And um, I mean, he's pretty caring um, and loving. Um, and, for example, um, he would always come to my games. If I ever had any game or any anything, he would always be. I'm not sure he ever missed any game I ever had for soccer or if I was in bed or choir. He always came to those things because um, he always wanted to be there. I was like his... He was my number one fan, that's what I was going to say. He was always there, I always wanted to be there for me, because he loved me, and that was pretty awesome. Um, and I was talking with my sister about some more things we could talk about. I mean, he always um, was one to kind of make a lesson out of different things. Um, and some of them were interesting, but like, he always had like a lesson. And it's like, don't do that, don't put your hand on the stove, because it hurts. Um, but one for me is, um, in high school, and just, just all the um, schooling, I was actually pretty smart. Um, being smart, but I really didn't have to work at it. It was pretty easy to get an A or just do an like it. It just came super easy for me. And um, I got to the point where I was just kind of watching how my grades were getting done, and my parents weren't having that because they're like, you can do better than that. Do the best that you can do. Um, so he made these posters, and they were pretty cheesy because they had some quick art smiley faces on them and other things. But it said, uh, don't just be smart, work hard. He's like, you gotta, you gotta work hard. You can't just be smart. You won't get anywhere uh, if you just be smart, because then you'll start um, losing it and all that. So he's always wanted to help me grow. He's always wanted to encourage me and to push me forward. He's always the one um, cheering me on. Um, and all like that. And he also always wanted to discipline me. I was somewhat of a troublemaker at some points and often annoying as a kid. So he only got to stop being so obnoxious, Jacob. Um, and the first thing I did, um, he was a parent, he was, uh, wanted to spank, and that's a funny story sure because apparently I have buns of steel, and, uh, and it, it, it just didn't affect me, and I was like, can't you have any murder? What? And I was like, he was, he was a great, but he was telling me, he was hurt his hand so bad, how do you think, you know, what do you think, like, I'm just, I pray God to live, but, he still doesn't tell really me how to find the right way, and I was, you know, take away things that I liked, which was video games as a kid, and I always wanted to play games, so he's like, oh, if you want to I'm going to take away the thing, bam. I was a good kid then. Um, but he always wanted to discipline me, and he was just, he was just good at that, and I really loved my dad. He was a great dad. Now Christina's going to talk about her experience. She has a whole paper for it. I got to have notes. There's a lot to talk about. Um, so like Jacob said, my experience with fathers is very, very different. Um... And just to give you kind of an insight into that, um, when I was an infant, my biological father had left my mother and I um, to start a new family out here in the Midwest. So I do not know who my bi- or I know who he is, but I don't know, I don't have a relationship with my biological father. Um, so up until I was about six or seven, it was just me and my mom. Um, so my mom had, she's awesome at this, she got to play both mother and father. Um, and she got to kind of do double duty. 
Um, sorry, I'm getting like way heavy compared to what Jacob just said. So, um, but in kindergarten, my mom got remarried, and I was really, really excited. Um, it was her high school sweetheart. I heard so much about him pretty much my whole life. Um, and so she remarried, and I knew that he wasn't my real dad. I was very aware of that. One, because he was Hispanic and had brown hair and brown skin, and I obviously do not have those things. <laughs> um, but I just knew, I knew who he was. But since he was the only, um, he was going to be the only real father that I really knew. So I really clung to that. Um, and aside from father figures that I had, uh, I had uncles and stuff like that. Um, my grandfather was one of the most awesome father figures in the whole world. Um, Keith, who was my stepdad, was my primary father figure, father example. Um, and for the most part, he was really awesome. Um, he came to my games. He coached Little League. He brought me to father-daughter dances. It was really great. Um, but there was struggle there. Um, he struggled with anger. He struggled with alcoholism. Um, and he struggled with infidelity. And so in high school, um, kind of when I was starting to get really serious about Jesus and kind of figuring this whole thing out, learning that God is my father, um, my parents were getting a divorce. And so it would have been very easy for me to hear, oh, God's your father, and for me to be very skeptical of that um, and not really embrace it as it should be embraced. Um, I could have gone even into my family thinking that a family in the future I didn't need to have a husband or a father to help me raise a kid. I could do it by myself because I watched my mom do it by herself and a man would just leave. Um, but what was really awesome for me uh, was that God never hardened my heart towards the role of a father. Uh, I never saw God as being distant or unfaithful or um, inconsistent, which is what my earthly father example was. It was kind of no father, then five years of a father, then no father again. Um, and when he was there, he wasn't really there. And so it was really awesome for me to be able to have such a soft heart and embrace God as a dad. Um, and now I have an awesome dad who is uh, my father-in-law. He's still an awesome dad. and um, He's a perfect example, I think. Or really close to perfect. <laughs> of who God just wants us to see um, when it comes to him as a father. And so, yeah, that's kind of my... So there you go. And on to the Bible, because we love the Bible. Um, so everybody knows about Jesus. He, um, his ministry actually took about three years, because um, he had to grow up and get old and stuff. Um, but there's about, I got some facts here. Um, but there's about 110 pages in the Bible dedicated to his ministry and message, about, about 110. Um, and there's about 25,000 words that Jesus spoke in the Bible. And um, 181 of those, he talks about their father in heaven. So that means one out of 140 words, which is actually quite a lot compared to all the other words in the Bible, one out of 140 words are about the Father, about God the Father in Jesus' ministry. And that's pretty much the sense of that because nothing else is, is more than that, maybe love, but because love's in the Father too. But that is his essential message. is about it. He's trying to connect us to the Father. That's why he came to earth so that we could be in uh, reconciliation and have a relationship with God the Father. So he came as a son to do that for us. And I have a bunch of verses here um, that kind of talk about that. Matthew 6.26 says, Look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store or lay in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Uh, Matthew 18, 12 through 14 says, What do you think? If a man owns a hundred sheep and one of them wanders away, will he not leave the ninety-nine on the hills and go to look for the one that wandered off? And if he finds it, I tell you the truth, he is happier about that one sheep than about the ninety-nine that did not wander off. In the same way, your Father in heaven is not willing that any of these little ones should be lost. Luke 6, 36, Be merciful just as your Father is merciful. Luke 12, 32, Do not be afraid, little flock, for your Father has been pleased to give you the kingdom. John 14, 1 through 2, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me, in my Father's house from many rooms. If it were not so, I would not have told you. I am going there to prepare a place for you. John 16, 27, Know the Father himself loves you because you have loved me, and he and have believed that I came from God. Isaiah 64, 8, Yet, O Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay, and you are our potter. We are all the work of your hand. 
Romans 8, 15 through 16. For you did not receive a spirit that makes you a slave again to fear, but you received the spirit of sonship. And by him we call it Abba Father, the spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Matthew 7, 9 through 11. Which of you, if his son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a snake? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? First John 3, 1. How great is the love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. And all of these verses kind of talk about the same thing, but all different that. But God, our Father, He He loves us. He He thinks that we are the most valuable thing in the whole world. He has a plan and a future for us. He has prepared a place in heaven for us, which is awesome. He is merciful. He is the protector. He teaches us. He cares about us. And He made us. Which is awesome because if we are made by Him, we are made in God's image. And God is perfect. And if we are in His image, that means we are close to perfect. But we are, we are awesome, just like God is awesome, because we are made in His image. And, interesting enough that Dave talked about this, but no matter how far you have wandered, you can still come home to God, because He always is there with open arms. Luke fifteen seventeen about the prodigal son, says, When he came to his senses, he said, I will set out and go back to my Father. Because God loves us so much, and He is the best Father. So if some of you fathers want to know how to be fathers, just follow God, and He will be the prime example for you. God is awesome. God is awesome. Right, I'm going to pray, and then we can do other things. But Jesus, thank you for being um, a great son to a great father. God the Father. Thank you for being the one that, that, that guides us and directs us and is always there ready to um, wrap us in his arms and, and help us and, and teach us. Thank you for being so good and, and everything, Lord. We love you, God, as you love us. Amen. All right, now, um, today is Thursday, so we're going to honor our family, so we got guys right there. But before we do that, um, well, actually, after we have a few like you can go out these off, we'll pray the whole thing. But we got dad's right there, which is awesome because it's dad's right there. Clever. Clever. I know. I feel like we do this all the time. Yeah, it was a long process to get these. But before that happens, we have a special um, from someone in the congregation that is going to sing a song, and it's going to be awesome. I don't know where oh, there he is. Okay, he's going to sing a song, and it's going to be great. Are you prepared? <laughs> 